Okay, done. Steph, do you want to talk to us? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Steph Miller, and I'm a librarian over at Multnomah County Library. Um, how many of you have been to the library in the past year pre-COVID? A lot of folks. Great. Online. Online. Yep. Yeah. That's the way to do it nowadays, especially as of today because of the four-week lockdown. But um, my main gig is coordinating tech programming and workforce development programming for the public at Multnomah County Library. And I've been there about 15 years and I'm happy um, and excited to share some of the resources that are available. It sounds like Rena mentioned you're using some online stuff. We're going to share more online stuff today. Over to Jessica. Hi, everybody. My name is Jessica. I'm the Director of Equity and Inclusion here at Metro East. And thank you all for your time. And I hope you enjoy some of these awesome resources that are available with a library card. OK, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Steph because she's going to talk a little bit about your library card. And then we'll go right into lynda.com. But just so you guys know, the three parts of this class. We're going to talk about lynda.com, which is available for th free through the Multnomah County Library, um, which is a way to get online training. And Lorena loves this. I know she's used it before. Um, we're going to talk about free online sources for like media. So if you need video or photos or audio that you can use with your work for free. Um, and then the last bit is we're going to talk about how to watch or enjoy media. So. Um, Steph's going to take it over again and say how we can use different services through the library to make that happen. And I'll be quiet now. So I'll do a screen share um, and I'll bring it over to our library website to talk about getting a library card. Hopefully you can see the library website from there. Our web address, multicolib.org is um, our landing page. Once you get here, you get the big search box in the middle. But if you wanna find out about getting a library card, right up in this menu here under using the library, there's a link for get a library card. And because right now all of our libraries are closed due to the pandemic, you can apply online and get instant access to e-content, e-books, streaming media. Once you click on apply online, we have a form that you could fill out and we will hook you up with a temporary library card. You will eventually get a physical library card when the libraries are open again. But in the meantime, since we're mostly doing online activity, e-card works great. And if you live outside of Multnomah County, does anyone live in Clackamas or um, Washington County? You can still get a free library card. And as a matter of fact, um, let's see, sign up for one of these options. So if you know someone who is living in one of the other surrounding counties, a little tip we sometimes share with folks, if you find that you're not getting enough materials through Multnomah County Library and you've hit your limit, get a library card from Clackamas, get a library card from Washington, because it gives you more options, more titles that you can draw from. So that's a pitch for other library systems too. Does anyone have any questions about getting a library card? It's pretty easy. Once you get to that page, you just kind of fill out the form and we set you up with the card. If you have any questions about your accounts, we have some information on the left-hand side here, manage my account, library card options, privacy and confidentiality. But if you get stuck, please remember you can always contact us, chat, email, call us, and we're happy to help you if it's giving you any trouble as you're getting a library card. So that is getting a library card. I'm gonna stop sharing and seeing any questions about that? Have you, um, does everyone have a library card? I may be talking to folks who already know and already have a card and are set up. Let me see thumbs up. Who has a card? I know I do. Let me say thumbs up for me too. Thumbs up. Excellent. So yeah, you're all set up. Perfect. 
let us know if you ever run into trouble accessing materials or um, or anything with our website or any questions at all. We're happy to help with anything. Let call us, chat us, email us. And Seth, did you want me to get into lynda.com for you? Or would you like to take over from there? I can go ahead and take it from here. I have it queued up. Give me a second. Great. Here. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, do we need to know where library is in our neighborhood for a car, for a new car? Because I tried to apply for a car for my son mm -hmm. and they were asking where was the library in the neighborhood? Oh, you know what? You can fill in. You don't have to say which library. Yeah, I see home library. You can say that. You can pick one and you can change it at any time. You don't necessarily have to know which one though. We could always change it later. Oh, you know what? I'm actually closer to the Midland Library. But if you wanna see a map, we do have a map of where the libraries are under locations. Okay. But yeah, you're right. It looks like the form is requiring a home library to be noted. If you're not sure what it is, go ahead and pick one. It doesn't matter for the card, but once the libraries open up again, you might want to switch it and find out your home library because then when you're placing holds on physical materials like books or DVDs, it's easier to have them brought to your home library if that's in your um, account. Okay. But for right now with e-content, it doesn't matter. Sounds good. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Can people see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So um, lynda.com. Let me just do a little overview here. I'm going to type in lynda.com in the library search engine here. And I think JLU, if you don't mind giving them the direct link, I'm going to click on this lynda.com right here. And there's an option to click here to access database. So if I click on that, it takes me to lynda.com. So let me kind of outline what lynda.com is. It's an online learning service. It's sort of like YouTube without all the garbage. So if you have software you want to learn or hardware like cameras, lights, audio stuff, um, this will teach, you can learn how to, you could learn how to use Microsoft Word. You could learn how to use Google Calendar. For our purposes, we're interested in learning media software. So Adobe Creative Suite, Final Cut, that kind of thing. Um, and it's usually $300 a year. And it's, um, so it's, it's an expensive service, not super expensive, it's worth it. But if you can use it for free, and this is the pro version that you can get for the library, um, then why not? So I'm actually, um, it's brought me here to uh, log in. Um, but um, it, if you ever have a problem signing in, let me see, I'm gonna, um, it's gonna ask me to go through the Multnomah County Library, but sometimes it asks what your organization, um, your, your organize, it's, it's multcolib.org is, is what the organization that you queue up will be. Um, so give me a second here. I'm not gonna enter my MasterCard. I'm going to use the library. So I put in my library card number and my library card password to get into Linda. Interesting. Give me a second here. There we go. Yep. No, I was just wondering, um, I got a library card when I signed up for this course and my mm -hmm. library card number seems to be much um, shorter. It's only like six or seven digits. Does, mm. that, does that sound okay? Steph, that's a question. It does sound okay. That is sort of like the temporary card we're setting up for online access. It should still work with our databases. But when the libraries are open again, when you stop by one of the libraries, we'll switch it over to a physical card and it'll be a much longer number then. Okay, because I tried to sign into Linda and it wouldn't let me, but maybe it was the same day and it hadn't been processed yet. Try it again when you get a chance. If it's still fighting you, click on, go to that contact page and um, 
We have, um, we, even though the libraries are closed, we still have people on the phone and on chat that can help you with your accounts. We've been getting a lot of phone calls about account questions. So please contact us if it's not working for you when you try it again. Super, thank you. Sure. Okay, so just, I'm, I'm gonna kind of go through this a little bit quickly because we're gonna do a little breakout room with split into a couple groups and we'll do breakout rooms where people can look at this. Um, on their own. So an, an overview, um, when I first get into lynda.com, just so you know, LinkedIn has acquired lynda.com. Um, so if you have, if you pay for a service, it'll be through LinkedIn, but it, apparently the library has managed to keep it lynda.com, correct? Steph? For now, you okay. know, they'll probably change it. Everybody's rebranding. <laughs> okay, but at one point it might turn into LinkedIn learning on you. They're both the same thing. LinkedIn bought lynda.com. So and Microsoft owns all that. Okay, sweet. <laughs> all right, so um, the right here is where I'm going to look for. I can go to the search bar and just immediately search for whatever I want. So if I look up, um, you know, let's look at um, 360 uh, video production and post. So Miriam. If I look this up, this would be a good opportunity to learn how to make a 360 video. Um, yeah. pretty, you just type it in and there you go. Um, you can type in things like I wanna say, I wanna learn Final Cut, which is software that we teach. There's all sorts of information on here. You can pick which skill level you want, beginner, intermediate or advanced um, and I just kind of like look for the definitive versions of things. Usually it's called essential training or fundamentals, especially if you're starting out. There's tons of nuanced stuff if you boil it down, but um, you know, usually I'm just looking for the big, big essential learning training. So um, if I go back to, I'm just gonna kind of load the front page here. Um, you'll notice that there's all these learning paths right here. I think this is if you have a particular thing you want to do, you can click on these learning paths. Um, let's see, Anibal has come. Hola, Anibal. Um, so if you click on these learning paths, um, it's going to give you an option. So I'll go back. Let's say I want to be a video editor. I can just look right here and um, there's all sorts of stuff on um, learning how to edit in a video. And then there's Premiere Pro and dialogue editing and that kind of stuff. So um, they're, they just call them paths. And it's a way that you can sort of like, if that's the career you're interested in or you're, you're interested in refining things, you can follow those. Um, Anibal Imate, are you guys okay if we record this? Or, yes, totally. Okay. <laughs> okay. Gracias por venir. Um, so uh, that's, that's paths, and I'm going to go back here. Um, a couple other things, you'll see this playlists over here. If you click down here, um, you can click on playlists here too. And that's basically, you can sort of like set up new playlists by category. So you'll notice like I have a website playlist, a photography playlist, a sound playlist, motion graphics things that sort of fall into that category. And I can create those things that are sort of custom for me. What's really cool about this version of Linda is that it's the pro version. So you can, they have uh, course materials that you can download too. So they'll send, you can download files and walk step-by-step step with the teachers, which are usually industry professionals. Um, and they'll walk you through different things. So if I dip into something, I'm gonna go to sound for instance here. And I'm going to go to audition essential training. Some other really cool kind of features. Um, let me make sure. Can you guys hear my audio here? Give me a second. Unlike that. the other tools you have access to when you're in the spectral frequency display, the spot. Do you hear that? Everybody hear that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's a few things. Um, you basically like courses just have these segments and stuff, but you'll notice on the right here, this is a little bookmark. Um, the I just means that I've watched it. And if you look on, sorry, on the left here, there's a bookmark. So if there's a particular video that I watch, like taking a clo closer look at the editor panel, I think further down here, I was interested in removing pops and clicks. So these bookmarks, if I search 
through here, I go to bookmarks and all of my book up, bookmarks show up here. I can also search them um, by sort of whatever I was interested in. So, you know, and then it cues that up. Something else that's kind of nice, I'm gonna go back. I can write a note on something. There's this notebook option. So for this course, while things are rolling To adjust along, the amplitude next to the slider. I now, once I release my mouse, notebook here. the level- I'm gonna mute this. If I go into notebook, I can write a note like really good solution for background noise. Hit enter. So you'll notice that it puts this bookmark right here. And when I click on that, it, go, it brings me right back to the point of the video that I was watching that has that piece of information that I was interested in. So I'll go back here to contents. The other thing that's helpful is you can see the, see the transcript for the class. So you can just follow along with the transcript. All the exercise files are here. And then there's um, this overview section, sort of helpful. It kind of explains it. Um, and then this view offline, if you want, you can download the, the course offline to watch. So um, that's sort of the interface. And I think for me, the, the you know what's nice about it is I can go at my own pace. Um, I kind of like to watch Linda at the end of the day, um, just because I don't have the brain power to do anything else. It's sort of like watching TV for me. Um, and then I was just going to hand it over to Stephanie to talk real quick about um, it was your profile, right? Right. Um, if you are doing a course in lynda.com because it's connected to LinkedIn, you have this opportunity to um, get certificates of completion that you can then post on your LinkedIn account if you're seeking a job in a specific field that um, it would show, show up well that you are, let me bring up my LinkedIn, my lynda.com. If it would um, be helpful in your job search, you can say, I took this, for example, I took one on um, unconscious bias. So it gave me a certificate of completion. I was able to add that to my LinkedIn profile. And it's a bit more difficult than I would think it'd be, but it's helpful if you're job seeking and people are looking at your profile, they're seeing what skills you have you don't necessarily test out to um, get that certificate. It really is just a certificate of completion, but they know that you've completed that program. So the reason why you might want to um, actually update your profile is because when you get that certificate of completion, let me show my screen. Share. So now I'm logged into my account. Um, my profile. It's really simple, but if you don't update this, it'll actually show um, whatever the default is, not your name on the certificate of completion. So you want to update your profile. But also under um, this option, you can say what your interests are and it'll actually feed you um, particular, um, and they do a lot of new content too, particular tutorials that they're doing. So maybe I want to hear about character animation. I want to hear about iPad music production. Then what happens is whenever there's some new content available on that topic on the home page, when you log in, in this section here, we have new popular recommended. You'll get recommended new tutorials that you might be interested in based on what you selected. You can also see what's hot at uh, MCL. Success habits, a lot of soft skills for job seekers. Excel is also very popular. So that is under um, right hand side, upper right hand side. You can also access your playlist and everything else. Here's your certificates. So here's my unconscious bias certificate. This is what it looks like. Let me view. I don't know if you can see that if it's showing up on your screen. Yep, we see it. But you can see my name. And again, it's from PMI, which is a well-respected organization. So they're putting content on um, lynda.com too, which is really helpful. Like Seth was saying, they're accredited folks, experts in the field. 
And for each course, I love that it gives a bio of who is this person? What's their background? Why should I listen to them? So they've paid a lot of attention to make sure there's expert information on that database. The page looks very blurry. Yeah, the, the certificate looks blurry, right? <laughs> I was just going to talk a little bit about, um, we're going to talk a little, Jaylu, did you want to introduce copyright free media sources or have me do it? Because I was also going to talk about Creative Commons. You should just do it then because it's, it's like, okay. like it. yeah, melds, blends into one. Sweet. Um, okay. In that case, I'm going to pull up. If you can put that um, Creative Commons link on the thingy, Mabobber. I'll, I'll make this short. When you make your own media content, so if it's a video, if it's a podcast, if you want to do like a photo, put a photo on a website or do a photo collage or whatever, you have to have permission to use those photos in one way or another. The biggest two ways is one is like people just say here it's free take it and you can use it and the other way is you have to pay for it. So there's different um, we have a we have a Google Doc which with a bunch of sort of resources that we thought were useful um, to find both of those things, but mostly towards the free end of things. Um, so, but, but it, it might end up that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about like there's different ways that people can share their stuff so that it's free, but there's sort of like um, there's things that you have to do to make sure that that you give credit for it, and that's called attribution. Um, but as as a media creator, this is really useful. I mean, you may not be able to get footage of the Eiffel Tower, but if you could get footage of it for free online, it'd be very useful. Um, or if you need like birds, mountains, pizza, whatever it is, um, photos of that, video of that, a lot of these resources we're sharing with you um, it are free resources that are copyright free. Um, and then it kind of depends on what you're using them for. If it's commercial, like you're going to make money off of it, then there's certain rules about that. But one, a couple of the sites we have are just free for anything, for commercial use. Um, it's you're able to just use it. So let me just kind of I'm going to do a quick screen share here. So what you're going to bump into, can everybody see that all right? Um, what you're going to hear in this world is Creative Commons. Um, that's a type of license that basically if I create a work, let's say I create I have footage that I record of a deer or audio that I record or a photo that I take um, or even like a vector graphic that I make, like some sort of graphic that I make, I can decide how that's shared. Now, if I'm a, my own employer and I make it, it I own it. Um, if I make it for somebody else, that's a different story. But people like to share what they have and um, there's different ways to share it. I'm not gonna go too deep into this but um, if you could drop the um, Creative Commons link into the chat, J. Lou, I think you probably already have. Um, it's the one that the Creative Commons about licenses, there's different types. So um, there's like an attribution type. So if I want to use somebody, uh, use something for people um, that somebody else made, if I want to use it in a video, then I can do um, what's called attribution. So let's say I made a music video, I use somebody's song. Well, I just need to give that person attribution. I need to say thank you in text at the end of the, the video. Um, or there's other ones. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll down. The one that I think is useful here is um, this Creative Commons like attribution. It has this little person symbol. And then there's this little dollar sign that's crossed out. That means that you can use this for anything you want, but it cannot be a commercial purpose. So you can't sell this. So you need to like look and see what that means. Um, let's see here. So um, yeah, there's, there's also like some of this says whether or not you can adapt it. So um, here, I'll go to this one right here. Um, it has um, attribution, it has this little like person and then it has this little equal sign. 
that means no derivatives. What that means is like, I can't take somebody's song and remix it if it has this little equal sign. I can't take a photo and, ad and adjust the color in it. I can't take a video and cut it up. It has to be in its original form. So um, you can't adjust that. So I'm gonna let you guys explore that. Um, some of those things, I think the sort of the best one is this public domain, this little zero with a slash through it. That means you can use it for whatever you want. Like, and that's the best, that's like the best kind of license you want to find. Um, and some of the resources we have are that sort of license with one little caveat, which is um, you can't mix something, remix something in a way that sort of like is offensive to the original person that made it. Um, so they wouldn't want you to like do something offensive. Let's say they took a picture of, um, I don't know, somebody, so they looked like a princess and then you like made it look like they were the Joker, something like that. That would be like, that would be sort of crossing over that line. And you'll just have to go from different website to website. They have different rules on this, but one of them in particular, Pixabay is what I'm thinking about. You can use it commercially, but you cannot um, do something that would defamate the subject or, or like sort of, and that's kind of gray, but basically, you know, they don't want you to do something that like would make them look bad. So if you guys want, we can explore that during our breakout session, but that's basically what, what we're talking about when we say creative commons and different types of sharing licenses. You can't just take music from, you know, Jay-Z or um, Cindy Lauper and use it in your video because you don't have permission to do that. You can't just take footage from, um, you know, March of the Penguins or, you know, Enchanted April and use that in your work. You have to have permission to use it first. And if you're um, sort of an up and coming media producer, uh, one of the ways that you can get around that is to find free media that you can use. And this is what we're trying to show you. All right. J. Lou, you have the comp. Okay, let me uh, get some of my stuff ready here. Um, so what I wanted to go over, oh, turn my camera on, is, um, so Seth was talking about, you know, getting some images. Uh, I wanted to talk about some different places where you can get sound or music. Uh, he, did, he had touched on that already. CC Mixter is, um, a sound, it's, it's now like kind of a separate project, but it came out of the folks who put together Creative Commons. Um, so CC Mixture, uh, and I am not screen sharing, which I'm gonna do that right now. Well, what's on? What's on? Um, Abita, I might mute your microphone just so we can keep oh, rolling. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, can everybody see this? See, I have what I have. I have, I have see, okay, cool. Um, so, you know, it looks, uh, it's pretty easy to kind of navigate around. There are some tabs up here that kind of give you kind of updated the newest things. Uh, and then um, I'm trying to see, oh, so, so up here it's kind of hard to see. It's really tiny, but you can find music um, and you can kind of, find things by searching through keywords. So if you know like a specific sound that you're looking for, or you can look for things that are like, uh, creators kind of group things by use, right? So they're, they, if they're like, oh, I think this is kind of a good, you know, 30 second intro for a podcast and they would put it into the podcast section. I really like uh, going through over here on the left-hand side, you can see all these like editor picks. I kind of like going through editor editor picks to see like what is like the new stuff. And so, uh, you know, it's not like the cutest looking site, but I think it's very utilitarian. So it's easy to kind of just look at things and like know, um, you know, uh, what you're looking at, you know, there's a description and then kind of like how to find stuff. So of course you can hit play here to listen to things. Can you see that it uh, downloaded it? Yep. Okay. Should finder. Oh, do you see my uh, finder boxes? I was gonna like play the sound, but no, we don't. We don't hear. Oh. 
Okay. close this. I tried to show you how, you know, to download it, but I think because it jumps to another window, it doesn't do that. But do you hear? No. The, no. All right, hold on. Let me try to share my screen. Wait. Okay, are you seeing CC Mixer? Yes. Okay. So I just uh, clicked on the link to open that particular file that I was interested in, and then, you know, go ahead and click play. And hopefully you're all hearing that. Yeah. Okay. So this is, you know, uh, a song. There's like a little. Uh, description here. I think these are actually lyrics. Shelves. Yep. Okay. So somebody like wrote a song that we could use, you know, if we had a movie or something and they just put it up on here. So CC Mixer, it's great. You can look for a bunch of different uh, types of songs uh, and different sound effects. Uh, I like freesounds.org more for sound effects, but I like this place a lot for songs because there's a ton of different things that you could look for. Um, and then free sounds. Do you all see free sounds? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think I have to log in here. I was trying to do this. So I like free sounds because um, it's good for getting sound effects. Um, and similar, uh, you just, you know, Go here, type look in the search bar, look for a sound. So let's say I'm looking for a train sound. I guess I was looking for a train sound recently. Uh, and then there's all these kind of different um, clips. What I like about free sounds is that you kind of actually get a preview or like you get a visual preview of what that sound might look like. So for example, if I knew that, you know, oh, I wanted a train sound that was far away, I could actually just see the thumbnail and know that, you know, it's like a quieter uh, waveform because it's smaller. Or if I knew I, I wanted a train sound that was like, I don't know, sounded like it was, you know, driving by. So I wanted it to be quieter at the front and louder in the end. And, you know, that would be reflected in how this waveform looked. So, um, so that's why I like having that kind of like visual cue. Uh, and then, of course, you can preview audi uh, sonically by hitting the play button here. And I'll wait for it. Hope it's not super loud. Okay, not super loud. All right, so you, you get it. Uh, and if you wanted to download it, you go ahead and click on the link, and then you can just uh, hit the download button. Um, you need to create an account to download stuff. It's pretty simple to do. And then if you have a free account, uh, I think they allow you, I forget what the maximum number of downloads is. You, you can download as much as you want, but after like 10 sounds, you'll get like a pop-up and free sounds will be like, hey, we'd really like you to contribute your own sounds. So they, 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 they like uh, really encourage a kind of like give and take. Um, so, you know, the, the whole idea is if you're uh, taking these sounds and using them, they want you to also add to their like audio bank. So uh, CC Mixer is good for music. Free sound is good for sound effects. Um, okay, and then what else? I'm gonna scooch back over to the curriculum. Ah, Wikimedia Commons. So I'm going to share again. Um, how many people use Wikipedia? <laughs> I do like multiple times a day. Um, so this is very similar to Wiki, uh, Wikipedia uh, in that it is, you know, user generated, user generated kind of like open source, uh, like repository of information. Um, so 
in the w Wikimedia Commons, you can find a ton of images that you can use. And usually uh, those images will have like attributions to them. So you know, again, like how was, Seth was saying, you know how to credit people. Um, and I kind of really like Wikimedia Commons just because um, they have like monthly photo challenges. So I like to see what the monthly photo challenges are. And it's kind of cool just to see the different things that people submit. Um, so there's all these different things. So let's say I was like, oh, this uh, bird image is like, you know, really speaking to me. I could click there. I don't know if y'all saw that, but, but oh, let me go back. Okay, so I clicked on the bird image and then, you know, there's this more details uh, button here on the lower right hand side. And then right beside that or uh, beneath that, actually, you can see the CCBYSA. And I forget uh, what that code is for this attribution. Um, but what I could do is click that and open it up. And oh my God, sorry, my cat is freaking out back here. Um, this type of attribution is I'm free to share and adapt this. Um, so I, I just have to like give credit but I can change it if I wanted to. Um, so I'm gonna go, come back to this image. So check the attribution uh, and then you click on more details. And then there's a little download link over here so that you can download your image. Um, oops. And then I think it is image quest now and Pixabay with Steph. Oh, do you have any questions with CC Mixer, Free Sounds, Wikimedia Commons. Oh, I skipped over archive.org. Jaylu, if you want to skip that one, that's fine. I think the biggest take home with that place is that it's basically like a great place to find old timey footage. Yes. Like we're talking like 1920s. If you need some like cool, like one of those old like um silent movies or something like that I like archive.org is a good place to find it i like archive.org like if you ever have you know some like i don't know about you folks but i like to just like put stuff on sometimes just to like have in the background and i really like to put on old documentaries that i can find from universities so documentaries from like the 60s or 70s to just like put them on in the background this is a great website for that kind of stuff it's like the, the random, random research footage. It's awesome. All right. And we're heading back to the library site. So let me do a quick sh screen share. We know what this place is. So um, ImageQuest is one of the databases you can access with your library card. Because we know what it's called, we could search here, but let me show you another way of getting there. Over here under research, we have a lot of databases you can use with your library card. You can get live homework help. I'm gonna just throw a plug in there. If you have students who need assistance, online tutoring, you can get it for free through live homework help. They also do resume review. But I'm coming down here to research tools. We have 139 databases with your library card that you can access. I'm going to go to type and we have a lot of different types of databases. I'm going to go to photographs and images and apply. We have many things you can access. Here's image quest. We also have the gallery, our own digital repository, but if we're looking for um, images that we can use without worrying too much about copyright or attribution, the one we want to go to is ImageQuest. It's actually from um, Britannica, Encyclopedia Britannica. I'm going to say begin using this resource. It's asking for my library card and my password. I'm going to log in. And here we go. So they have like 3 million images, Getty images, DK publishing images. Um, if you wanna see all of the collections, bottom right corner here, our collections, they tell you what they're highlighting. Some of the collections, they have a lot of art museum collections. But you can also search their database. They, I did a search for this one, Occupy Portland. I don't know if you remember that from 2011. 
they have a lot of great images that Getty captured about the protests happening during Occupy Portland. And you can see the images here. So with these, these are all, all rights cleared. You can use them for non-commercial use, educational use. If you want to get more information about an image, here's the elk. A lot of action happening, happening at that elk where the mayor shut down the encampments. You can get more information. You can get citation if you're doing a paper and you need to cite your source or for attribution. You can get information about how to attribute it, download it, more information about this image. So it has some metadata, data about data. So it's telling us what keywords. If you want more about Occupy Portland, you could follow this link. More about Portland in general, you can follow that link and it's telling you about the image itself. So that was just one search with Occupy Portland. Any questions about that? They have clip arts, lots of other um, resources in here. So if you're looking for images you can use for your projects, this is a great place to try to. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, I'm gonna be the caboose here. Uh, uh, let me do a screen share here. The last resource um, for free stuff. Now, the, the, the Google Doc that we're giving you guys has other resources. Um, you can't edit it, but if you want to, you can make a copy of it. You're well, just comb through that and see what works for you. But I think um, after exploring, can everybody see my screen all right? Yes. Okay. Um, so I actually, after looking at a, a bunch of different resources, I really like this place called, it's called Pixabay. So I'm going to log in here. And what's cool about this site is it's, it's free, free to use for commercial and non-commercial uses. So basically anything that, that you get from this site is you can use. Now it's a variety pack of what you're going to get in terms of the quality of things. Um, but I'm just going to explore. Um, there's all sorts of things, photos, illustrations, vector graphics. I'm going to go to videos just because I think it's helpful. Um, but the photos are really good quality, but there's all sorts of crazy stuff, um, like a time lapse of the mountains that I can use, or a cat's eyes. Um, let me see golden particles. So if you really need some like golden particles for your show to convey a sense of magic, then this is a place where you can find it. Um, there's all sorts of just, you know, and it kind of, it says it's HD or 4K. So it's really kind of, you know, I think it's pretty, there, there's a lot of stuff like, what did I look up? Um, let's look up birds. I mean, there's all this really cool footage and you can tell if it's 4K, people do these like awesome time lapses and stuff like that. Um, just really beautiful footage that is free to use. Um, and I think sort of some of the thrust behind it, like what Jay Lou was saying earlier is, you as an artist are welcome to contribute to this too. And I, and I suspect what's happening is like, some of these are really beautiful images and footage that like they're not selling on iStock photo or some other place. I think one is just like people wanna contribute back, but I also suspect that some of these people probably there's people that see enough of their footage that they're like, oh, I might want to hire you. So that's something to think about, you know? Um, you can sell your footage to a place that sells it to other, and then you sort of relinquish your rights in some respects to it, or you could upload it to something like this and then everybody can use it. So you might have footage of something really cool that nobody else has, um, So, but um, you know, this would be a good place to upload it and a good place to share it, so. Um, that is Pixabay, and like I said, I think it's a really good place for, you know, photos to vector graphics are just like, um, you know, graphics that you can download and scale a bunch. But it, obviously, like, look at all these awesome pictures of birds and, I don't know, just really excellent photos. So it's worth looking at. Did everybody feel like they found something cool? Does anybody want to talk, you know, just shout out and say something neat that they found? 
You can't say sparkling digital magic dust because I found that one. That's mine. Jairo, did you find anything cool? Um, I, I mean, I for myself, yeah, they were pretty cool. So I just uh, sharing that I do a lot of like flyers and things like that nature. So I did the uh, Pixabay and they had some pretty awesome images um you know the, i was like i could could have used this in the past for some flyers but yeah all right anyone else i i think pixabay is new for me i'm going to kind of check it out and see what can i get there yeah it's amazing what people will offer for free I, I think I want to join it just because I have a bunch of footage I'd like to share. Um, and I think it's it's a really easy way to share it so that everybody can use it, you know. Okay, I think so we're going to have Steph talk a little bit about how can you watch or listen or read media for free through the library. Okay, so we're going back to the library website. And everyone knows the web address by now, multicolib.org. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I'm going to talk about three um, of our databases, Overdrive or Libby. That's a really popular one with thousands of ebooks, digital audiobooks. I'm also going to talk about Canopy, where you can get some streaming video. And then we also have Hoopla, where you can get video, comic books, lots of different things. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen again. Here we go. So when you're on our library website, one of the most popular pages on our website is the ebooks page, especially now. Um, when you click on ebooks and more, then ebooks and more one more time. These are our major um, streaming and downloadable e content resources. For Overdrive, it's going to be the very first one that we're offering here. You can download, you can stream, and you can use it from your desktop. There's a Libby app, which is really simplified for like a smartphone or a tablet. And then we have an OverDrive app. I'm gonna just go ahead to the Your Desktop since we're on a desktop. So here is where you can access thousands of eBooks in a lot of different languages, um, thousands of digital audiobooks. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. We highlight certain titles. So right now um, we're highlighting Native American Heritage Month. You could see with each title that we're featuring here, you can tell right away whether or not it's available. That one's available, that one's available. And you could see what kind of format is it is. Overdrive has um, two formats. You have your ebook and you have your digital audiobook. So you can tell right on the first screen what type of format it is. And then you could see you could borrow it. Some titles we have available all the time, but uh, most of our titles, we only have a limited number of copies. So say I wanted to get this title, There, There by Tommy Orange. It's an audiobook. If I click on it, it'll give me more information about that title. And from here, I can listen to a sample or I could go ahead and borrow it. With OverDrive, you can check out 50 titles at a time. They are for three weeks that you can check them out for, and then you can place 20 holds. We upped it up during um, the pandemic. It used to be 20 checkouts, but because we want to make sure folks are reading when they can, now you can get 50 checkouts at a time. And then if no one wants it, after you've checked it out and you've had it for 21 days or three weeks, if no one wants it, 72 hours before it's due, it'll say, do you want to renew it? So then you can have it for even more time. Sort of like a real book where you can renew. So say I wanted to get this audiobook. If I click borrow, 
I want to borrow for 21 days. And now it's given me an option. So you have two options with this desktop view. You can either download it to your computer so that you don't have to worry about being connected to the internet. Or you can listen now in your browser. So if you do listen now in your browser, that's the streaming version. That means you do have a connection to the internet and you won't have a problem staying connected. A lot of folks end up downloading their eBooks and their um, audiobooks because they may be on a smartphone or a tablet that doesn't have like dedicated data plan or they don't have reliable Wi-Fi. So they'll download it when they have Wi-Fi, but then they can read the book when they don't have access to the internet. So I'm gonna listen now in my browser and it should start playing it right away. Here we go, I hit the play button. And we don't hear anything because I'm not sharing my sound. So I'll stop that. Let me go back and I'm gonna close that. So it's really easy to check out eBooks and audiobooks from OverDrive. If you have um, a smartphone, a tablet, a Kindle, you're gonna to wanna to look at getting the Libby app. If you go to your Google Play Store or your iTunes Store, if you do the search for the word Libby, it'll come right up. Really simple interface for doing the same thing we're doing here on a desktop, but on your smartphone or tablet. If you wanted to search our collection, here's where you can search. You hit the magnifying glass, say I wanna look for, what did I wanna search for? Mm. Here's an old sci-fi classic that I love called Gray Matters. I'm gonna search for that. So it's giving me five results for gray matters. Looks like we have going gray, that's available, available. This one has a wait list. So you can place a hold on it. When it becomes available, you can set up so that you get an email when it's available for you to read it and check it out. But these aren't the books that I was looking for. This isn't the gray matters I was thinking of. If I scroll down though, didn't find what you were looking for, you can recommend. If the library doesn't already own it, you can recommend this is the book I actually wanted. I want the library to own it, so I'm gonna recommend it. And ideally the library will then buy it and we will have it available for checkout. If we buy this title, we'll add you to the wait list and email you. That is not my email address, exciting. <laughs> so you also have a lot of kids titles, teen titles in here too. And we feature um, key collections, Native American Heritage Month. So we're featuring specific titles based on what's happening at the time. We have a lot of titles around anti-racism um, you'll see that on the homepage of the Overdrive 2. We are getting a lot of diverse titles. We're getting much better about purchasing diverse titles, diverse um, characters for children's books, which are hard to find. They're getting better though. There's more variety now for kids. So I'm gonna go back to the main collection So you've checked something out, where did it go? I'm checking this out, let me check this one out. Let's see, Isabel Lande. Let me go ahead and check that one out too. It looks like it's available. I'm gonna borrow that, borrow. So you know, you load up your cart, I'm gonna close that. To find all those items that you checked out over here, my account, go to loans. And then this is where you can see everything that you've checked out. I only have five titles checked out. I can get 45 more titles. And then again, this is where I can download the MP3 so I can listen without being connected to the internet or I can listen right in my browser. 
it automatically disappears after 21 days. So you don't have to worry about returning it, but a lot of people worry, well, there's a long wait list. If you wanna return it early, you get the option for returning early too. You can also see on the left-hand side, you have your holds, you can have a wish list, recommendations. You'll get recommended titles based on what you have checked out. It'll keep track of your history. What have you read in the past? So that is Overdrive and Libby's the name of the simplified app for your um, smartphone. But a lot of folks get stuck using this um, database because there's a lot of different formats and there's a lot of different devices folks use to listen or read their um, e-content. So when you're on the page, if you click on this help, they have an amazing help page. Usually when I'm helping someone at the library, you know, they got a new smartphone, they want to read ebooks, we'll go to this help page. And the first step we'll do is say, okay, what kind of device do you have? Because depending on the device, you go about getting your books in a different way. So say, I think I heard someone say they have a Mac. So I click on the Mac option. It'll tell you exactly what software you need in order to use OverDrive, what kind of formats you can use with OverDrive. And then it'll give you some getting started, step-by-step -step tips on getting started with a Mac. And a top secret tip that we have with this service is you can contact us. We get lots of questions about OverDrive and Libby, but you can also contact OverDrive directly. All the way at the bottom, there's this support link. When library staff get stuck, they can't figure out, I don't know what's going on, we'll actually direct people, and I'm gonna put in my zip code so that it knows I'm at Multnomah County Library, here's Portland, get support. This form here, and actually I'm gonna paste this into the chat box. This form is where, where'd it go? I can't bring it up. No worries, I'll paste it in later. This is where if you send it in directly, you'll get a direct response from OverDrive. And they ask a lot of detailed questions because again, it can get complicated depending on what kind of device you're using. We also have Kindle um, support for OverDrive. Our main resource or our main database for Kindle titles is this OverDrive database. So you can go to Kindle Books. Any questions about that? That was kind of a quick overview. I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see you. Any questions about OverDrive? Has I anyone have a question. Yeah. If I, if I download the books in my computer, how mm -hmm. can I return it? They automatically disappear. You don't have to worry about returning it. They have some code in there where after 21 days, it'll just automatically disappear. Okay, thank you. Which is nice compared to print books. You have to come to the library, bring it back. This, it just poof, goes away. And there's something in the chat. If you get stuck, here's that um, help page for OverDrive and Libby if you get stuck along the way. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next one then. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. The next one we're gonna take a look at is Canopy. I'm gonna go back to that eBooks e and audiobooks page. So here's the OverDrive um, database we just looked at. And you'll notice we kind of have a theme here. Get to the actual resource here, desktop app, but then here's the link for the help page. Same thing down here with Canopy. Canopy is where you can get streaming movies. Um, they have a lot of classics, documentaries, indies. There's an app you can get. And actually that app works on like Roku and smart TVs, Fire TV. I actually downloaded it on my smart TV so I can watch Canopy movies there. I'm gonna go ahead and click into that. Now you notice with these, we don't have to go through that process of entering our um, library card number and password because the first time you go in, it's gonna ask you to set up an account. 
So these are a little bit different than that image quest database we were looking at. So you notice there's a lot of movies in here. You can do um, watch six movies each month. It used to be 10, but now it's six each month. And they have some great ways of kind of browsing the collection. They have RBG. Um, you can do some browsing here. They have classic cinema, historical perspectives, Battle of Algiers. And to watch it, you can see how easy it is. I just want to watch that. You have three days to watch it. You can watch it right in the browser. You can also, here we go, create a clip, a playlist. And if you need a transcript, they'll give you a transcript too. They also have Canopy for kids. A lot of these um, resources through the library, they have a kid's version. So if you're looking for something for the kids to watch beyond um, YouTube or what they're already watching, here, a lot of them based on children's books. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus. They've turned a lot of books into movies for kids, which is kind of great. I'm gonna exit Canopy for Kids to go back to the adult version of Canopy. This is where I first ran across what we do in the shadows. I love this movie. Are you serious? That's you can get that on <laughs> canopy. Yes, Amazing. I love it. it that movie's so good. It is so good. You have to be 18 and over. Just a heads up, but it is so funny. And they made it into a TV show. And look, they're giving you recommendations for other options on the right hand side. They also have, um, do they have it by, I am not seeing that they do it by movie studio, but you can search by movie studio. I've really been loving um, A24, they did Midsommar. They've made some amazing films. So if you're looking for a specific studio, Moonlight, the Lobster, which is creepy. Oh, Ex Machina. I love that. If you love sci-fi, that is a great film. So again, six movies each month. I think it should be 10. It was 10, but maybe they knocked it back down. You kind of run out of them sooner than you expect after a while. And three-day checkout. Any questions about that? The Canopy. So remember, I think they have, they tell you all of the, yep, at the very bottom of the screen, it tells you where you can play Canopy on, what they have apps for, iPhone, Android, Chromecast, Roku, Fire TV, Samsung, and here's the little help page, support. I'm going to go back to the ebook page. So here we are at eBooks and more. So we looked at Canopy. Again, here's the quick link for getting help. And now here's Hoopla. Again, we're streaming movies, music, comics, TVs, TV shows. And then here's the help link again. I'm gonna click on the main link for accessing Hoopla. Now Hoopla is a little weird. Um, not only do you have to log in, you know, connect it with your library card number, but you also have to create a separate login for Hoopla. I'm going to go to my Hoopla. Print borrowed. I'm going to turn off kids. So they are creating this option where if you do have children that are accessing this, maybe you want to have the kids feature turned on so they're not seeing all the adult titles. I'm going to go to browse. Here's what you can find in here. Movies, music, comics, television. I'm going to go to comics. And they have a lot of kids books in here too. Avatar, Minecraft. You can search by publishers, you know, be loyal to uh, local publishers. They have Dark Horse. They're over in Milwaukee still, I think, right? Dark Horse Comics? Yes. 
Yeah, we have their, a lot of their titles in here. A lot of Avatar. <laughs> that series is a long one. Oh, this is a hilarious one, Plants vs. Zombies. I think I know that artist, Paul Tobin. Yes, my husband knows this person. If you want to actually read it, I'm going to go ahead and borrow this. I'm going to borrow the title, 21 Days, so it's available for 21 days after you borrow it. It's only available streaming, so that means you have to stay connected to the internet. Yes, I want to borrow that title. And then what are you doing there? I'm going to close that. I'm going to come back here and click read. Are all Hoopla content, is that uh, required to be connected to the internet? It is, though there is an option. If you get the Hoopla app, the app does let you download titles, but it has to stay within the Hoopla app. You can't put it into your devices like downloads. So that is a comic book that we are reading online. I'm going to go back. It'll remember I can favorite things just like a lot of other websites. You can favorite things, make lists. They have TV shows, music. I want to look for actually they have Adult Swim. I'm an aging hipster. And Adult Swim, a Gen Xer, Adult Swim was um, very popular in my formative years. Aqua Teen Hunger Force formed a lot of my uh, thoughts about what a comedy show should be like, a cartoon should be like. So you can watch a lot of TV shows in here too. If you get stuck with it, at the bottom of the screen, like with a lot of the other um, sites, there's a little help link. And they have some really helpful um, troubleshooting tips in here. Roku, because you can get the app on different database or different um, devices, they have Roku basics. I don't think I put Hoopla on my Roku yet. Using Hoopla with Alexa, if you use an Alexa device, you can connect it with an Alexa skill. That's new. I did not realize that they could do that. How many titles? It looks like asking questions of Hoopla, but not necessarily listening, which would have been way better. They have the Hamilton soundtrack. Fleetwood Max, so a lot of titles that you can read. So with Hoopla, 10 items a month, three-day checkout. And yeah, I think that's the major highlights of using that service. So I'm going to go back to the eBooks and More page. So to get to that from the library website, if you go to eBooks and More, eBooks and More, they were listed here and we have some other things. We have online magazines. Um, here are some specific e-contents for kids. And then if you're doing some research, there's a lot of e-content for research. And again, if you get stuck, contact us and we're happy to help. That was a whirlwind tour of a lot of our e-content. Any questions about that? You're welcome, Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> I use Libby all the time. I love it. It's great for audiobooks. Uh, I used to use Audible, but once I found out about Libby and also once I found out that like most of the titles that I was looking for is available on Libby, I was like, oh, I'm not going to give Amazon my money. Yes. <laughs> right. And you see, if we don't have it, you might be able to recommend it that we do purchase it really easy in the search. I love that. I use that one a lot. Mm -hmm. I use Libby a lot and I have a few books. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. I really like it. 
And one of the things I really like about using the eBooks is that it can make the text larger. You can change the uh, contrast so it's easier to read. With the audiobooks, you can kind of time it if you think you're going to be going to sleep in 30 minutes, just set it for a 30 minute timer. So it gives you a lot of options that the print material can't necessarily do or the physical material. I also like Canopy because it has like, um, you know, I mean, like at this point, I've watched almost everything I care to watch on Netflix. So like having Canopy is nice because it's like different, it's different kinds of content. Yeah. And it's nice to like uh, watch some stuff that's not created by, you know, just the six corporations that own everything else. Exactly. They do have a lot of independent um, film studio films on there. Thank you, that was great. Any other questions about library resources? I'm happy to share. How, uh, where can I get um, images for children's books? So you're writing a children's book and you want to put images into it? Like a free, I don't know if they free or where I can, uh, I, I, I would like to have free, but mm -hmm. where can I, which website? So I'm thinking a lot of what um, Seth and Jessica shared around Pixabay for images that you can use for your own literature, your own books that you're writing. Those are great resources. Um, if you want to see what other artists have done in children's books, to get inspired and see how it was kind of laid out. You can certainly use like, you could see there's a kid's version of Overdrive and a kid's version of Hoopla. So you could see what other um, writers and artists have done with their books too. But if you're looking for your own images to use, I would definitely um, take a look at the list that was shared and maybe we could share that one again. All the copyright free images. And then Heido, do, does canva.com have a template for books? I don't know. I've I don't know if tried. Canva, I don't know if Canva has a template for books or not. Um, but could, yeah. could Lorena use the yes. clip arts uh, resource from the library? In the image quest, they do have clip art. Now it has to be for educational non-commercial. Oh, that's right, that's right. Right. But there is clip art in that image quest. Um, or is this more for like a paper? Are you thinking about publishing? Paper, yeah. So for educational use, so you can absolutely use those then. If you're publishing it, it's a different story because you're making money off of it. But if you're publishing a paper, that image quest that um, we shared before is a great option. And actually, let me go back to, um, I'm gonna do screen share again, if that's okay. I'm gonna go back to our homepage. So we went to research, research tools to get to that image quest. This is one way to get to all of those databases we have. And we have a lot of them. Type, and then I select photographs and images. Apply. So yeah, car repair, That's you don't need a wiring diagram, but maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure what the book's about. I don't know if that would be helpful necessarily, but the one we were looking at is this one down here, Image Quest. Begin using, what type of image are you thinking of, Lorena? Uh, kind of like a cartoonish. So it sounds like maybe something like the clip art might be helpful. Yeah, some, some clip art style. I'm coming down here to the bottom right, our collections. It looks like they've added a new clip art collection from Graphics Factory. So they have a thousand images. This may or may not be quite what you're looking for. Let me make the images smaller. 
so that we could see them. But you can use any of these because it's for educational use. This is an option. And if you want to find out more about it, there we are. And if you want more like that, we want more cute. How many images for cute? There's over 16,000 images for cute. And yeah, <laughs> that's all cute, pretty cute. <laughs> you could say, I only want the clip art. I like the cute alphabet. I know, that is awesome. And that's, it looks like it's vector too. Vector illustration. Is that helpful, Lorena? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. My time. I'm going to go look it into. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I think we, it's getting close to time, so we should probably close. Mm -hmm. Um, so want to say thank you, Steph, for being our um, guest star. We appreciate it. Um, we Thanks love working having. with the library. We are we all wear BFF necklaces um, <laughs> with them. And thanks for everybody that came. We really appreciate it. Uh, we have more upcoming workshops. Um, if you just visit our events page at metroeast.org. Um, if J. Lou, if you don't mind dropping in the events link just so people can sign up. Um, what we do is we check out equipment and me, um, train people on media software so they can create media. And it's generally film, but we have the capacity. You can take photos, you can make music, you could do a podcast. So if you're interested in those things and you haven't worked with us before, um, take an orientation. You can get a membership with us um, and start doing those things. And we're trying, we're basically every month we have a series of orientations and um, editing and field camera workshops and then something like this which is sort of a topical workshop that you can take and find out new stuff um, so please come back we'd love to have you back and um, if you hopefully you have our newsletter if you don't um, I don't know if there's a place to sign up for it but if you are interested in where our, our events are you can continue to sign up for our events um, and then, Steph, did you want to say anything about how to get into library workshops? Jessica beat me to the pun. She put a fabulous <laughs> link in there just okay. now. All right. <laughs> the next one we're having is um, a basic overview of iPhone and iPads. 